Implacable, capricious, treacherous, cruel. The sea draws no distinction between the strong and the weak, the skilled and the inept. In conditions such as these, there will always be a need for a lifeboat service. It would surprise many people, however, that for every life lost at sea in gales or winter storms, there's another death by drowning on a normal summer's day. There's nothing particularly difficult about learning the basic essentials of seamanship, provided you set about it the right way. Okay, the run is in, Nigel. Put the tailor in, will you, please? Tell her, what's the tiller? The piece of wood that goes on top of the rudder. I got See any piece of wood? Oh, hell, I left that in the car. You jump out and hold the boat, I'll go and get it. Nice jackets. Mm, no, the bird's frightened enough already. Where is it? Ah, there's the tiller. Of course, there's always the old method of trial and error. Some people enjoy the excitement of never knowing quite what's going to happen next, even if they might have had a shrewd idea. Sailing is one of the most friendly sports, and there's always plenty of help and advice for anyone who really wants to learn. Fortunately, the only injury on this occasion is to Nigel's pride. And Rosie isn't likely to let him forget it in a hurry. Practice and experience are the most valuable safeguards a sailor can possess. Both Mike and Chris started very young, and now, as dinghy sailors, they're extremely competent. They know better than most that not even experts are immune from accident. Yeah, I know, but we come on. Remember when we capsized in the sun at that time? We weren't learning, no, we? No, true enough, but never again. That was an experience they could well have done without. Handling a racing dinghy in a breeze is a job that calls for quick reactions and good teamwork. To an experienced crew used to working together like Mike and Chris, this was just the start of yet another race. We're going for the line. Well out, Chris. Keep right out. You're doing fine. I think the wind's freshening, Mike. We've got just about all we can handle. Don't worry, it'll be much better once we run the mark. Good. Sailing, in all its many aspects, is a surprisingly safe sport, providing it's approached with common sense. Like anything fast and exciting, it has its element of risk. The basis of good seamanship is to reduce that risk to an acceptable level. Mike and Chris had a good start and they were well placed on the first beat, but the breeze was freshening all the time and it was one of those rare occasions when a girl might wish she were a bit heavier. One of the greatest pleasures of a long, hard flog to windward in a dinghy is when it ends and you ease sheets around the weather mark, taking off in a wild headlong flight downhill, sliding from wave top to wave top, with the spray coming back so hard that it's sometimes difficult to breathe. It's gonna be a dead run for the next mark, Chris. Get your water wings on. Couldn't get me any wetter if you tried. Right, we'll make it now. Ready about. See you. Away. I think you're right, Chris. We'll tack downwind and go right across to the other shore, OK? Yes. We've got plenty in hand on the others. No point in risking capsize. Look, someone's over. Can you see who it is? 
is. Looks very like your father. <laughs> Great. Is he OK? Yes, the club launch is going over there. Even the most experienced crews capsize occasionally. But with normal safety precautions, there's usually little danger. But very occasionally, an unforeseen complication can turn a ducking into a potential disaster. Great. You must be doing 15 knots. Really paid us to come right over this side, Chris. Are you going over to West Shore Bank? No. With this tide, there'll be a filthy sea running there. We'll jive, leave it to starboard, and then jive again as soon as we're past. Don't leave it too long. It's getting shallower. Right. We'll go now. Stand by. Ready. Jibo. Ow! The pedal's broken. I can't hold her. You OK, Chris? Yeah, I'm OK. Right. Try and get the anchor out as quick as you can. We'll be in real trouble if the tide sweeps in on the shoal. OK, let's try and get her up. Might be able to fix a rudder now. Look out, I can Chris, you all right? What happened? Needles Coast Guard, Needles Coast Guard. Bangford, Bangford, do you read? Over. Farrington Car Ferry. Yeah, Coast Guard, Needles, over. Needles Coast Guard, Barringford. Uh, there's a dinghy in trouble off Hurst Point. Could be somebody injured, and the ebb tide's taking them towards the shingles. Over. Hello? Yes? Hi, I'll be secretary speaking. This is Coast Guard Needles. The Farringford Car Ferry has reported a dinghy capsized off Hurst Point. Will you please launch and assist? Incidentally, the Yarmouth lifeboat is exercising off the Needles, and I will also request his services. Right, we'll launch. The Livington IRB is also proceeding. Over. Hello, the Needles Coast Guard, Needles Coast Guard, Yarmouth lifeboat flying, yes. Message received and understood are proceeding to the coast now. Listening out. I'll leave it fairly full around the ears. Yes. Right. Is that a maroon? It's more than lucky that Mike and Chris's plight was spotted by the captain of the ferry. Nine minutes after his first message to the Coast Guard, the crew of the local IRB were briefed and on their way to the rescue. Don't worry, Chris. Someone's bound to have seen us. Won't be long now. Can't hang on much longer. Step far to the shore. Can't we see for it? No. Stay with the boat, whatever you do, Chris. It's further than it looks, and you'll never make it in this tide. OK, but I hope they make it in time. It's still dragging, you know. No one can afford to rely on good luck if they're involved in an accident at sea. By using their experience and remaining calm in a very unpleasant situation, Mike and Chris managed to get their anchor down and gain for themselves a few extra minutes. Minutes that were, in fact, to prove vital.
task of the RNLI is the saving of life at sea. And by the time help came, Chris, who'd been hit by the broken boom, was almost at the end of her endurance. But once again, luck was with them. As soon as they were safely transferred to the Yarmouth lifeboat, the IRB was able to return and salvage their dinghy as well. Incidentally, although it is true that every lifeboat does carry a bottle of Martel cognac, there are easier ways of getting it. The modern IRB has two great advantages for coastal rescue work. Its speed and its ability to operate in shallow and rocky waters. Like all our lifeboats, they're manned by volunteers whose services are given freely to all who use the sea. They look so miserable. Hello, you two. All right. Oh, always as bad as that. How did you manage oh. to cut sight from these ones? Well, it always happens when you have a female on board. Compared with Chris and Mike's experience, our hero's performance today was a very tame affair. I see you left your life jacket. Yet neither of them was left with any illusions. I go anywhere near a boat again. Most yachtsmen will never need the services of a lifeboat. But to each and every one of them, it could prove their last and only lifeline. A possibility that no seaman worthy of the name would ever underrate. Today, services to pleasure craft make up over 60% of all the RNLI's work. This means that every year, the RNLI saves the lives of over 1,000 people who put to sea for fun. This is not just the problem of inexperienced beginners putting to sea in unseaworthy craft. Accidents can and do happen even to the most experienced yachtsmen. Everyone who goes to sea can feel safe in the knowledge that the RNLI is there to serve them. The lifeboat service is maintained entirely from voluntary subscriptions. And for this reason, the RNLI has organized a national membership scheme called Shoreline that would like to make regular contributions. For a small annual amount, you can become a member of Shoreline. Those who use the sea for pleasure can feel that this is a rather special way of supporting the service that is so vital to saving lives at sea. We are an island race, and all of us are connected with the sea, whether we like to admit it or not. I urge all of you who see this film to join and help the RNLI go on saving lives. After all, someday it could be yours. Yacht off Nab Tower, lost all bound sails. Five crew need immediate assistance. Request lifeboat standby until tuggerized to tow casualty. I've taken yacht and casualty tower. two miles west of Midvan Boy. Twenty people missing, helicopter in air. I'm in search area now. Small yacht capsized 130 out one mile off CG station. Six hustler type yachts around casualty assistance. Four survivors taken aboard and proceeding to harbour. 